Welcome to Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Meet Your Competition series uh, that is offered through the CAE CD Community of Practice. Very happy to have all of you with us today. Uh, we've had a this is our second year. We're wrapping up our second year of this initiative. We've met with a lot of really good competitions and thank you all for joining us so frequently. Today, we're excited to have what we believe will be two presentations. The first is from Michael Nowakowski from Augusta University. They are uh, they're running the Vivid competition, which is close to our hearts in the CAE community. It is a second CAE competition. And uh, speaking for the NCAE Cyber Games, we're excited to have both a beginner and now a more advanced competition path within the CAE developed competitions. So we asked Michael to be here. This is the first time running it. And I know from experience that there are lots of twists and turns. So we're here to hear about some of those twists and turns and how things are going so far. Uh, Michael, please take it away. All right, thank you very much, Jake. And thank you, uh, Yair, for having me speak today. Uh, just gonna do kind of a quick overview of the, the Vivid competition and then have some time for questions and uh, hopefully not take a whole lot of time. Let's see. Are you able to see my slide? Yes. Okay, so uh, the Vivid competition is hosted by the, the Vivid Coalition, uh, led by University of Alabama in Huntsville. And the rest of the coalition you can see is uh, Augusta University, University of Arizona, and Ford International University. Uh, Josh Pauli and I, uh, Josh from University of Arizona, are the lead for the, the competition part of the, the Vivid grant. Uh, so there's also a virtual internship portion, and then uh, Randy Pastana from Ford International University has the lead for the annual colloquium event that will happen uh, October, November timeframe uh, this year. So the, uh, the vivid competition is done in two phases. The, the first phase is going to be a, a virtual competition uh, that will be taking place from the 11th to the 14th of March. And then the, the live competition based on uh, how teams finish in the virtual competition will take place live at that annual event uh, in either October or November timeframe. So there is a, a link off of the CAE community page. Uh, if you click on the, the news, it's one of the, the top uh, items there on the, the news page where there's more details about the competition format, the scenario, and also a link to registration for the teams. So the, the format for the, the virtual competition is five team members uh, from the, the same CAE designated school. Uh, schools can have multiple teams register. The platform will be able to handle up to about 200 teams. Uh, when I checked a couple hours ago, there were 75 teams registered so far, so we still have some room. The uh, registration is going to stay open until the end of February. Uh, we'll send announcements or emails each week to the, the teams who have registered uh, within the last week, uh, letting them know that they're successfully registered uh, and then the link to further information for them. So during the, the actual week of the competition, it's broken down into to four days, really three days. Uh, day zero, just a prep day, will only be probably about an hour of time for the teams just to make sure that they can log on to the, the competition platform and we'll navigate a little bit, download a couple very simple challenges, uh, and then that'll be the end for day zero. Uh, on day one, That'll be a, a Jeopardy style capture the flag where they will solve challenges that are related to uh, days two and three. So day two is a, a red team focused series of challenges where they will do a, a penetration into a network and look for some, some clues there that help them uh, to achieve the, the end goal, the, the end flag. And then on day three, 
mostly focused on blue team events, uh, more on the, the incident response. So there won't be live red team events that the teams will have to defend against on day three. Uh, again, more just incident response, uh, looking at some artifacts that are on the, the machines and trying to figure out uh, what the, the attackers were able to get uh, and, and maybe how to set up some defenses to prevent further attacks. Um, so the teams will have uh, about six hours each day on days one, two, and three to compete. Uh, the platform will be open for at least 18 hours each day, but we're limiting to six hours of, of uh, competing for the teams based on the time of the, the first team member log on. Uh, that way, students don't have to miss uh, three days in a row of, of classes to compete. They can kind of, based on when they can all get together, when they're available, uh, they can decide when during that 18 hour window they're going to compete. Uh, and I think that also helps with time zone differences as, uh, as well as some other factors that, that may play into it. Uh, again, the, the top 15 teams then out of the, the virtual competition will advance to the live round. There is a stipend available for travel for the teams to attend the live event. For the virtual event, no uh, faculty coaches or anything like that are, are necessary. In fact, um, based on some recommendations uh, from, from other folks in the community, we, we didn't even involve faculty on the, the team registration part uh, for this event. So if faculty haven't really heard what teams you got involved, um, that's because we didn't want to bother you at, at this stage. Um, if one of your teams makes it to the live event, then uh, you will be asked, your school will be asked to send a, a faculty representative with them. Again, there is some, some travel uh, funding available for the students. Uh, all of the competition for both the virtual and the live event will take place on the Georgia Cyber Range. So no special equipment or anything like that is, is needed. Uh, as long as you've got something where you can log on through a web interface uh, to the, the competition platform, uh, that's all you'll need. So a uh, pretty low bar for entry into the, the competition. If you have other questions, I see there's a, a couple here in the chat that I'll get to. Uh, if you have other questions, you can contact myself or Josh, and uh, we'll be happy to, to get back with you uh, to answer those questions. Uh, let me just check. All right, there's actually no questions that I see in the, the chat. So um, if there are any questions that you'd like to, to say out loud, I'm, I'm happy to respond to those. Thanks for that overview, Michael. Are there questions from the audience? I have a question, Michael. Are you looking for first timers or people who have played before or a combination? So for the, the virtual event, uh, it's really open to, to all comers, but um, based on kind of the, the NCAE game, uh, the competition uh, strategy, this would be kind of a, a second level uh, competition, but we're definitely not restricting uh, teams to uh, must have competed somewhere else already, uh, but it, it will be, um, we're hoping, uh, maybe a little bit more challenging uh, than, than a beginner level event. There will be some uh, challenges that, that will be um, on the, the easier side because we don't want to uh, frustrate teams if, if this may be their, their first competition. Uh, there's a question on how scoring works for the red and blue sides of events. So there will be challenges to solve, uh, and they will get points for the, the, the challenges that they solve. Thanks, Michael. I'm just following up on that. So, so those will be CTF-style solve, solve the challenge events, not necessarily a live defend the service kind of event, correct? That That is correct. Okay. So and there's kind of a, a through the, the scenario, uh, there's kind of a, you know, a path that, that you should follow. So it's not just like a, a Jeopardy style where you just pick random uh, challenges to solve. There will be kind of a, a story to follow both for the, the red team events and the blue team events. And uh, and Michael, I really 
from my perspective, you have a unique concept, CTF followed by a little bit of red teaming, followed by a little bit of blue teaming. How did you develop that concept and, and what, what made that approach stand out for your team? So we, we discussed this a little bit and, and wanted to do something a little bit different than um, some of the other competitions that are out there. And to also, uh, since it is not necessarily a beginner's event, to, to kind of have a wide variety of tasks. So we, we did go to the, uh, the NICE framework and the, the DOD uh, cyber workforce uh, site to look at different tasks that different work roles uh, would, would know or, or should know. And so that's kind of where we built some of the, the, the challenges off of are some of those, those tasks. Um, and to, to give teams a little bit of variety, there, there are purposely yeah. um, red team competitions out there and there are purposely uh, blue team competitions out there, but we wanted to, again, kind of offer a little bit of both in this one. And then the, the live event will be really the, the same format, but we'll add a, a fourth day to the, the live event that will be uh, kind of a, a king of the hill where the, the teams will be uh, attacking and defending uh, live uh, against each other. So uh, that hopefully will be exciting. Uh, we'll have some uh, some plan to have some physical effects there to uh, maybe make it a little bit more interesting for, uh, for people to, to watch or to observe what's going on as well. And Michael, I did have one question. This is Victoria Farrell. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So I have one team, I have two teams registered, but one only had four people on it when I registered. Um, but now I'm finding, because registration was extended and there's more students that have now said they would like to participate, can I add a fifth student to that team of four? Yes, yeah, just uh, email Josh and I, okay. um, and we can update the, the registration for that. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we asked for, for five team members, but if you don't have a full team, that's fine as well. Uh, so don't feel like, you know, I've only got four students. They they can't compete because we can't find a fifth. Go ahead and just have them register um, as a team of four. Um, that That's fine. Okay. Um, yep. Great. Thank I'm, you. I'm only emailing that the team captains. So if some of your team members have said they haven't received anything directly from me or or Josh. Uh, again, that's because we're we're just contacting the team captains. Perfect. Um, I see a question: Are these run as separate events, or is there a cumulative score with one team winning it all? So it will be a, a cumulative score over the the three days of the virtual event, and then the the four days of the live event. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk with you. Um, again, we, we still have plenty of capacity on the platform for your teams to compete. Um, so please visit the, the CAE community website and uh, look at the news, and you'll see the link for the information. So thank you again. Thanks, Michael. We're really looking forward to it. A new competition, new format. It's really exciting. That concludes our first presentation. I'm not sure if our Cyber Patriot presenters have joined us. I'm expecting Rachel Zimmerman or Frank Zabrowski. Any, are either of you here? Okay, well, we uh, apologize that our Cyber Patriot presenters did not make it to the event. We will reschedule them. We're really looking forward to hearing a little bit about the competitions that feed into our program. So that's why you'll see Cyber Patriot and Pico CTF on the agenda for the last few meetings of this semester. As always, if you have any suggestions about competitions you have not yet heard of, first of all, we have all of our presentations archived on Yair's 
see uh, community of practice page. So you can see past presentations there. If you have any suggestions for future presentations, please email myself or Dan Manson, and we will, uh, I'll drop my email address into the chat box. And uh, so this is a very short meeting for this week, but thank you very much everyone for joining. Thank you, Jake.